DuPonte onstage presentation is made possible with generous support from Bigelow Laboratory for Ocean Sciences, Clark Insurance, Drum and Drum Real Estate, First National Wealth Management, Frost Gully Violins, Highland Green, Kevin McElroy Violins, Les Fossils Restoration Resources, McCandless and Coburn Attorneys, Management Accounting, Now You're Cooking, Stars Fine Jewelry, Thornton Oaks Retirement Community, Wood Sound Studio, and from individual supporters like you. Thank you. Hello and welcome. I'm Suzanne Nance, and I'm your host for this wonderful new series of digital concerts presented by the DePonte String Quartet. I am so excited about this concert. The DePonte String Quartet has had a tough time getting together as a quartet during COVID-19, so this concert series is very special. We look forward to a time in the near future when we can gather together at live concerts but for now, we're pleased to bring you these virtual musical feasts. And of course, the DePonte String Quartet is able to bring you these and other programs because of generous support from music lovers like you. So please consider donating today at DePonte.org. Your gift will make a big difference. Thank you. Now, let's get ready for this musical journey. I'm going to turn it over to one of the DePonte String Quartet musicians to tell you more about what we're going to hear. And I hope you enjoy the program. Hello everybody, uh, I am Ferdinand Leva, I am one of the violinists in the DePonte String Quartet. Tonight you will be hearing the first string quartet of Erwin Schulhoff. Schulhoff was born in 1894 in Prague and he was very well trained as a, as a child, as a pianist, and it was determined early on that he was a child prodigy. and received only the best of training throughout his young life. And by the time he was an adult, he was concertizing all over Europe and uh, England, performing his own music, and particularly jazz, which was a new idiom. He really um, latched on to that idiom and uh, was influenced, influenced by it quite heavily. <clears throat> After many years, he finally returned home in 1923 and was exposed to the art movement Dadaism. Now, this was a movement in which art artists were rebelling against imperialism and nationalism and the, the coming war. And they claimed that their art was silly and trivial and not to be taken seriously. And virtually any item could become a piece of art. And often it was in caricature, like it could be a music stand, it could be a chandelier, it could be really anything. <clears throat> and it was quite not to be taken seriously. And some of this influence made its way into this first string quartet, um, which was written in 1924, I believe I said. He was, in 1939, he was trying to get out of Prague because of the coming war, and the Germans had occupied a number of countries by that time and he could not get out to the U.S. or to England. So he applied for and received immigration papers to the, to the Soviet Union. And just as he was about to go in 1939, the Germans captured him and interred him, interred him at Wolfsburg concentration camp, where he stayed and died in 1942 of tuberculosis. So it was a fairly sad ending to one of the great musical lives. lives. Uh, the movement is in, uh, the, the piece is in four movements. The first movement is Allegro con Floco. Now this movement is quite driven rhythmically, kind of in the shade of Bartok or Stravinsky. 
and there is quite a bit of unison playing, meaning the four instrumentalists are playing exactly the same thing at exactly the same time. Now, it's not only that, but that is the majority of the movement. And it ends sort of in a rush of fast moving notes to an abrupt sudden ending, which is comes as a, a real surprise. In this movement, which may be some of his Dada influence, he uses some new techniques for string quartet writing, and one of them is called left hand pizzicato. And what this means is we play a note with the bow, and as we play that note, we use that same finger to pluck the string. So that's left hand pizzicato, not right hand pizzicato. So in this particular movement, it, my own part sounds like this. Except it goes extremely quickly. It's one of the quite fast and it's it's an, an interesting texture and <clears throat> also he uses something called false harmonics now this is a technique in which we stop the string at any point that the composer determines let's say he chooses the note B on the A string now that's right here and that note sounds like this and the false harmonic is placed at exactly a perfect fourth above the note that you're stopping. So that would mean in this case, B, C, D, E is a perfect fourth. So the technique is you press down the B and you very lightly touch a perfect fourth above. You don't press the string. So this becomes this. And we can move that pitch anywhere the composer says. So we can move. And you will hear particularly myself and cello do that. And you will hear quite a bit of that later in the piece as well, between the viola and the first line. <clears throat> the second movement, Allegro con molto e con malinconia grotesca. So, an, a moving allegro with great grotesque melancholy. That sounds Dadaist. This movement is very easygoing, even almost nostalgic. And there is a, uh, some solo playing in this movement for first violin, viola, and cello. And in this movement, there are some also interesting techniques called glissando, which is sliding a note like this. So that you hear that connection between the notes. And also something called sol ponticello, which means play on the bridge. Ponticello, the ponte is the bridge. So that goes, that makes a very ghostly, eerie type of a sound. So if you hear this, as I move to the bridge, that whistly, ethereal sound, that's Sol Ponticello, and you will hear that. Now the third movement returns to that driven rhythmic element that was present in the first movement. And again, this movement ends with a sudden shocking ending as well. And it's called Allegro Giocoso alla Slovacca. And again, this movement has a, a bit of solo playing for different instruments, so we're not always playing in unison. The last movement, Andante Molto Sostenuto, is extremely reminiscent of a ticking clock. And he even determines the metronome marking at 60 beats per minute, meaning we're following a rhythm of seconds, base, base, not basically, exactly seconds, as well as we can. 
And there is a very eerie opening of solo playing as first violin and second violin lay down this very gentle ostinato, meaning an obstinate uh, accompaniment of rhythmic and harmonic features that stays there. And the, the viola and the cello play this eerie solo above this ticking ostinato underneath. And there's quite a bit of that throughout, throughout this movement. And as we come to the end of the movement, you can very well imagine the ticking of a clock. Again, it's an ostinato, moving ostinato, very gentle, very soft, just ticking, ticking, until you can't hear it anymore. It just fades into nothingness. So we hope you enjoy uh, the first string quartet of Erwin Schulhoff. Thank you. 
This DuPonte on-stage presentation is made possible with generous support from Bigelow Laboratory for Ocean Sciences, Clark Insurance, Drum and Drum Real Estate, First National Wealth Management, Frost Gully Violins, Highland Green, Kevin McElroy Violins, Les Fossils Restoration Resources, McCandless and Coburn Attorneys, Management Accounting, Now You're Cooking, Stars Fine Jewelry, Thornton Oaks Retirement Community, Wood Sound Studio, and from individual supporters like you. Thank you.